Connect with the families more. Try to understand what the culture was. That will help them a lot to keep their stories with them. It all started when I was just going to meet up with my friends like I do every weekend. But little did I know that this wasn't me just catching a bus to her house. This was about to be the beginning of a long journey of identity, discovery and reconnection that had slowly withered away over the years. Hi, my name is Yusra and I'm 16 years old living in Melbourne. My parents are from Ethiopia and I live with my two parents and my three younger brothers. Being a teenager in the West can be quite challenging. I have to juggle school, friends, um, having a part-time job and dealing with my family. But, but no matter how hard these commitments are, dealing with my family has always been the hardest. It's not like I don't want to connect or get along, but it's just that whenever I try, I just can't. I know that somewhere in my heart I can if I try, but what can I really do? Like I don't even talk the same language that they're comfortable with. I don't know how it will help me. I don't even know if the effort's really worth it. I knew that if I wanted to get some answers, I would have to start having some conversations. So that's what I did. There are a lot of young people who feel shy to speak their own language. Even if they do know it, they choose not to. Yeah, too, yeah. They choose to speak English because speaking English is being cool. You speak more than language, it's, it makes you wise. Yeah. So what, what do you think could help us teenagers improve our Amharic language skills? Yeah, it's acceptance. Mm -hmm. If you accept who you are, you wanted to do it, and you can do it. Yeah, it probably will be easy for you to learn Amharic than for us to come in this country to learn English. Mm -hmm. Any young people, if you choose to learn Amharic or you choose to learn your native language, you can because you got the choice. For you, you've got a mum and dad at home, you've got a grandpa, you've got auntie and uncles. And the way I learned English, Yusra, it's amazing. You know, I wrote everywhere in my house. Lights, light, mm -hmm. fridge, fridge, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> everything. So I have to learn how to say them. It's all about willing and acceptance. You, do you really accept your identity and who you are? I know that for the longest time, I haven't been connected or even tried to connect with my family through my native language. I want to know if this is common within my community. Simish Manna. Zainab. Safiya. Kerry. I mean. Abu Bakr. Zaid. Asinta Matnesh. Asla and uh, Sid. 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 What is Sid? I mean, Asr. Asr Sid. 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 I find it fascinating how within the same household, the same family, the same house, there can be two completely different worlds that form due to this language barrier. There is a huge lack of connection and sympathy that just grows bigger over the years as the generations drift apart due to not being able to communicate. The worst case scenario, the language is lost in the family forever. My ancestors learnt English as a necessity to survive in a foreign country. But was I willing to take on this journey of Amharic to give back to them and nurture a deep relationship? I knew I had to start somewhere. And that somewhere was all the way at home base with mum, the one who I got most of my culture and upbringing from. Mum, yeah. uh, can you tell me about Amharic? Amharic is um, 
the main um, language in Ethiopia. Yeah. And uh, it was spoken in the last 2,000 years. Wow. Yeah. So, since Kwamkwa Alle. Since Kwamkwa Alle. Um, we have 80 languages in Ethiopia, but the, mm, the most known is um, Amharic and uh, Oromo. My dad he used to speak um, Tigrinya. I don't speak Tigrinya. My mom, she used to speak Amharic. So that's why I speak Amharic. And that's why we should, we should learn Amharic too. You should. Not only you should, you have to. You know, remember 2012 when I take you back to Ethiopia? Yeah. When you came back here and he, he forgot English? Yeah. He knew all of her economy. Yeah, because we stayed there for six months and mashallah, he was so perfect um, in Amharic. So in, in six months you can learn your language? Yes, we can. Even in three months you can learn. But if you want to, only if you want to. Inshallah, in the future we have a plan to go back to Ethiopia to see my mom. Okay. How are you going to uh, communicate with my mom, yeah. with my I sisters, need... with my aunties? How are you going to communicate? Especially grandma. And you have to know your that. culture, you have to know your background. You have to know where your mom came from. So I think you should. Okay. Yeah? Life is a journey with ups and downs. Just because I haven't grown up learning my native language doesn't mean I've lost my chance. Do I wish I had realized it sooner like these little guys? Sure, but it's not time to sit in sorrow over the time I have lost. It's about my willingness now. I have to be better. I have to strive to connect to people in my life. I can't let my native language, which is a part of who I am, be forgotten. Because it's not just a language, it's how the people that care about me get to know me. I can't let those who know me forget me. I have to try to learn my language, attempt to understand my culture and know my people. Holding on to my native language is holding on to my identity, heritage and family, which is never going to change. Learning my native language to connect with my family is a continuous journey I have chosen to embark on. But are you willing to do the same?